How easy is it for you to get to sleep and stay asleep? Are you constantly unfocused and tired and sluggish during the day because you didn't sleep well? Now, there are several factors that influence sleep quality, the number one builder of resilience. And today, I'm going to outline ways that you can leverage those to ramp up your sleep quality, ramp up your resilience. If you want to thrive in today's crazy, complex world, not just survive, then please subscribe to this channel and set the alarm so that you know when videos are coming on. I'm Ravi Tangri, and I learned a long time ago that the secret to complexity, like the world we live in, is not about making huge, radical changes in your life, but rather about finding those tiny little pressure points where you put a little bit of effort here, a little here, and everything transforms. And that's what I produce videos about regularly. So please subscribe, like, and share this so others you know who can use this information will get it. Today, we're building on uh, Better Sleep Week to really outline some strategies to improve your sleep quality, which is the number one determinant of resilience. So there's a number of things that you can do. This is not rocket science. I can say that I'm a rocket scientist. It's very simple, but it's a matter of making these changes to really shift the results that you're getting. So we're going to talk about things like the, the setting that you're sleeping in, uh, how you go to sleep, when you go to sleep, and other things you can do during the day that will impact your sleep quality and your resilience directly. So let's get started. The first is the importance of natural light. I talked about that in the first video this week. And it's really important to be able to get out for at least 30 minutes a day uh, to help regulate your body's internal clock, especially if you can do that first thing in the morning when it's light. It makes a huge difference. And this builds in some exercise for you and so on. So getting out, letting your body know, hey, it's daylight, that can have a huge impact. Now in winter, especially if you are dealing with seasonal affective disorder, um, what it can help is having lights. You can get lights that support that to help you with that. Uh, and find ways though to getting more natural light to get you out. Another thing here is timing of sleep and having consistency. Your body likes a regular rhythm or a regular cycle. So see if you can go to sleep at similar times. Now, one thing that actually hurts you long term for sleep quality and resilience is a lot of people sleep in on the weekend. That's actually not a great thing to do because what it does is it gives you jet lag for Monday and you have trouble, you're more sluggish, you're more tired. If you have been losing sleep and you want to catch up, the secret is not to sleep early or sleep in, but rather to go to bed early. And you, probably 90 minutes early, which will give you a full um, cycle of, of deeper sleep there that you can you can recover over the course of the night. So the times where you want to catch up on sleep, go to bed earlier. Don't sleep in. Wake up at the same time so your body knows that's there and it, you start to work with that internal rhythm so that you can be alert moving forward in the day. Okay. Now, another thing that you want to look at is the environment in which you sleep. Ideally, it's going to be a cool, dark, quiet environment. Now, sometimes the quiet part can be a challenge with family, but work with what you can. Uh, 
not having a really hot or warm room makes a difference. You, it's great to be warm under the covers, but if it's a little cooler in the room, you'll actually have a better sleep. I know a lot of people sleep with the window open all year long. Personally, I can't really do that. I find that that's too cold in the winter, but at least I can keep it a little cooler um, so, that, so that I can sleep better. The other thing is making sure that it's dark. Do you have the curtains that actually block out the light? Or does the light uh, come shining in? This is especially important in the summer where it can be light very late at night. So if you can block that light off early in the day, even eight-ish or nine-ish to work with your sleep cycle when you're getting into your cool down period, which I've talked about, you'll be much better able to sleep. Now, tied into that is the um, uh, use of screens. Do not, do not, do not use any sort of screens uh, in the hour to 90 minutes before you go to sleep. I know people who have TVs in their bedroom. Absolutely the worst thing that you can do to, to have that light because your body thinks it's still light. It's not producing the melatonin that's going to help you get a restful sleep and you will have a much more disrupted sleep. So getting away from the light is really critical. Having a dimmer and so on during that cool down period for, for you could be reading, you could be journaling, you could be chatting with someone, you could go for a, a walk, but something that doesn't involve screens. Now, um, something that uh, you can do that will really accelerate the um, your your body's ability to deal with stress and anxiety, which will improve your sleep quality, is to have some sort of a mindfulness practice, whether it's meditation or uh, tai chi or whatever else. And this is again something you can do in the cool down period. Uh, it's something that will allow your mind to quiet to be present, to just be able to let go of those things, which will help you sleep a whole lot better. Now, the um, interesting thing here is uh, I would suggest you don't do this just before you go to sleep, that you meditate, but then you do other things, journaling, um, reading, you know, cleaning up a little bit in the house, having a conversation, and then go to sleep. Because if you always meditate just before you sleep, you'll actually condition yourself to go to sleep with meditation, which really isn't where it's the most useful. So meditation is something to do in that cool down period, but then have some sort of light activity after that so that you're not going right to sleep after the meditation. If um, meditation is used properly, it's not making you tired. It's just making you more aware, okay, and more present. And then I've mentioned this in the other videos, but another thing that's got huge, huge impact on resilience overall, but also on sleep quality is exercise. So if you get out in the morning, if you're doing something, uh, during the day, every day, what exercise does is it helps regulate your cortisol levels. And if you're stressed from the day, your cortisol levels will be spiking a lot and that makes it hard to sleep. So the more you exercise, the more effective your control is going to be so that when it comes time to sleep, you'll be able to sleep with, uh, with a lot more ease because your body is able to regulate that cortisol. So these are some simple changes that you can make. I One clear thing I want to recommend is do not try to do a whole list of things. Pick one, maybe two things and focus on that for two or three weeks. It's about building new habits. If you constantly try to do all of these things, you're going to fail because you're trying to do too much. So focus on one, maybe two things now for two, three weeks, and when they become new habits, then you can pick another. 
you know, you've invested your whole life building what may not work in the best way for you. Let's invest a bit of time to start to shift that. Now, one of the things that uh, make a, a big difference in uh, sleep, which we'll be covering in the next couple of uh, videos, is uh, the head chatter. Because we can't go to sleep because our heads are going, you know, a mile a minute. So what I've created is a free course because there's so much need out there coming out of the pandemic and all of the challenges we've had since. Um, that I've created this and I'm offering it for free uh, to help you shut that self-talk off whenever you want. Imagine that, being able to turn it off on a dime. Just go to silentselftalk.com and sign up for the course. It's all yours. Remember, if you want to see more of these videos that show you how to thrive in this crazy complex world that we're in, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell so that you will be notified when the videos are up. And please like and share so that we can pass this on to everybody who can use this information.